I want to talk about the uh, primary rifle of the uh, Rhodesian Light Infantry, which would, they would have called the FN rifle. I have a uh, American-made uh, Austrian-designed variant of the uh, FN rifle, but it's essentially very similar. Uh, there's some differences I'll be honest about. Um, this is almost like an M16 type flash hider. Uh, the barrel is only 16 inches long, which may uh, affect the accuracy. I added this uh, rail myself so that I could put a light on it if I wanted to. I also added this rail, um, which replaced the top cover, dust cover on the uh, FN rifle, and it screws in for stability. And this allowed me to uh, put a optic on here, which I'll take off to make it more authentic uh, later on. Um, I have left my carrying handle on. I understand the uh, Rhodesians often remove this because there was an incident where the uh, carrying handle uh, raised up a little bit and caused an either malfunction of the weapon because the brass couldn't uh, eject properly and uh, I think there was an injury as a result of that. Um, I forget the story but maybe some of the Rhodesian War veterans uh, know what I'm talking about here. Well, this is a magazine release right here. So if I push that forward then the magazine rotates and it uh, Rotates in like an uh, like an AK magazine, so it doesn't go straight in like an M16. So this is a semi-automatic only, and a lot of the issued, I think the the British Army had semi-automatic only inch pattern FALs. This is a metric pattern FAL, and I know the Rhodesians had metric pattern FALs, so I'm not sure if it was common for them to have uh, the full auto selective fire ones, but um, this one is only semi-automatic due to the uh, all the red tape and expense and uh, time involved in getting fully automatic weapons in the United States. So this is the safety, and then this is the uh, bolt release. So if the bolt was to the rear, I could depress this and, and go ahead and charge the weapon. So what I propose to do is just uh, fire a 100 meter group with this and see how large it is and then compare it to some of the other weapons on the battlefield at the time. This weapon fires a 7.62 NATO, which is a uh, 30 caliber essentially uh, round, uh, very fast. It travels about 3,000 feet per second. In order to correctly load this weapon, what I'm going to do is uh, pull the bolt all the way to the rear, then push up on the magazine release, or the bolt release, sorry. And I'll uh, rotate the magazine in and then pull down on the bolt release. That firmly uh, seats the cartridge in the chamber. So at 100 meters, uh, firing the uh, FN with an optic, I got a 5-inch group, so that would make it a 5 MOA rifle, assuming uh, no user error. Now, I really hate to do this, but I don't think that this optic package was available to the Rhodesian Army, so I'm going to uh, remove the optic uh, for the sake of authenticity, and we'll fire another group using just the iron sights. Okay, I removed the optic, and while I was at it, I also removed the sling. Uh, my understanding is that the uh, Rhodesian Army uh, did not typically carry slings in the field. The idea was that you wanted the rifle in your hand and not on your shoulder in case you got ambushed or something. You could immediately uh, return fire or had a uh, meeting engagement or whatever. You could quickly uh, react with the weapon in your hand as opposed to being uh, slung on your shoulder. Also, these uh, sling swivels... Uh, tend to rattle and make noise, so I'll uh, tape this down before I go to the field. I'd like to talk about these iron sights. So when this rifle came, it had this tiny little peep sight in the back that had just a pinhole in it, and I'd have to put my eye right up next to it in order to see the front sight post. And in fact, I ruined a couple of pairs of uh, expensive glasses because this little metal block would come back with the recoil and scratch my glasses. I had to put my eye so close to the uh, rear sight, so I replaced it with these uh, tritium sights. So tritium is a radioactive element with a half-life of uh, somewhere around 12 or 13 years, and uh, it powers the uh, glow-in-the-dark uh, sights for people not familiar with tritium sights. 
So I have tritium sites front and rear, but the aperture is too big now, and uh, I think that might affect the accuracy. Well, this is terrible, folks. We got a nice little equilateral triangle with nine inch sides with the uh, FN and iron sights. So this is another weapon that would have been found on the uh, Rhodesian Bushboard battlefield, uh, most likely carried by the uh, communist terrorists who were opposing the Rhodesian army. Um, this is a Romanian version of the uh, AKM. Uh, sort of a misnomer to call all these rifles AK-47s. The original AK-47 was designed in 1947. It was almost a prototype that was uh, produced in very limited numbers. Uh, it was made out of a milled receiver, which made it unnecessarily heavy. So the next version to come out in the 1950s was the uh, uh, Avtomat uh, Kalashnikov, I guess modified is what the M stands for. So this represents uh, AKM. This again is a uh, civilianized version. So in an earlier life, it was a Romanian AKM, but it was converted to be only semi-automatic by the importer, uh, Century Arms. Anyway, a very reliable weapon. This rifle was produced about 1965 in Romania, so it could very well have ended up in uh, Rhodesia. Uh, just going over the features, this is the muzzle brake. Uh, so just having the barrel at an angle like this forces the gas to uh, push down on the rifle at the same time the recoil is pushing up on it to try to even things out and reduce recoil. This is the uh, safety so on a uh, normal uh, military AK the up position is safe and then the first position down would be fully automatic this does not have that and then all the way down is semi-automatic I have a spray paint at the top of mine to cut down on glare, and uh, I was just rereading uh, Hannes Vessel's uh, book about the uh, Rhodesian SAS, and he mentioned that uh, one of the things that gave away the uh, communist terrorists was the sun glinting off of their weapons. Um, so I'd already taken care of that just by taking the dust cover off and spray painting it. Um, this magazine is also very uh, subdued for whatever reason it came that way. So. Yeah, good, reliable weapon. We'll see how it compares uh, as far as precision. I wanted to compare the FN rifle ammunition, which is 7.62 NATO, to the AK ammunition, which is 7.62 uh, Warsaw pack. One is uh, 51 millimeters long and one is uh, 39 millimeters long. Uh, the actual bullet on the NATO ammunition is about 150 grains and it tends to be about 125 grains and the uh, AK ammunition. So slightly lighter bullet moving uh, much more slowly because there's less powder behind it. Uh, typical velocity would be 2400 feet per second for this and 3000 feet per second for the uh, FN ammunition. Um, so really it's difficult to hit anything with an AK out past about 300 meters because it starts dropping so much whereas the uh, 7.16 NATO is capable of uh, mechanically going out to six or 800 meters uh, without much problem. It's pretty good uh, sniper ammunition for that reason. Uh, most AK ammunition available in the United States is um, made in uh, Russia, and I'm filming this in the spring of 2022, and the Russians just invaded Ukraine and the uh, current administration of my country has uh, placed all kinds of sanctions on Russia. Even before the invasion, they uh, had announced that they weren't gonna improve licenses to import any more uh, ammunition from Russia. So it's going to make AK ammunition uh, rare and expensive in the short term until other countries uh, come online and hopefully make up for the deficit. The bolt doesn't lock open on the AK, so the way I found to most reliably uh, see the cartridge is uh, I kind of hook the uh, catch on my pinky, pull it all the way back, and then just let my hand slide off. And that allows the uh, full force of the spring to engage and firmly seat the first round in the chamber.
one thing I'd like to show are the sights on the AK. Um, they're very much like pistol sights, so you don't have a peep sight like you have on the uh, FN rifle. And that can make it a little more difficult to uh, line the sights up and uh, consistently uh, have the same uh, elevation. The other thing I really like about the AK is what uh, a guy named Gabriel Suarez calls the uh, Caveman EOTech. So if you're in close quarter of uh, battle inside of uh, 25 meters, you can just shoulder the rifle and put this large assembly on, on the target. This is just to show you what that target looks like 100 meters away. Very small without any optics to uh, magnify it. So uh, we got a 9 inch group uh, with the AKM and iron sights just like we got a 9 inch group with the uh, FN and iron sights. And as I predicted it was really the elevation that was a problem. Uh, left and right was pretty close but uh, you know one uh, round hit a lot higher than the other. The other rifle one could have conceivably come across in the Rhodesian Bush War was the uh, American M16. Uh, this being a uh, representing an M16A2 uh, or Colt AR-15A2 and it has a original Colt scope on it and this would have been available. Um, you don't need any modification with the M16 because the carrying handle is a very stable platform for an optic. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, fire this with and without scope. So with the M16, uh, I got a three inch group. Like the FN, the most effective method of uh, loading the M16 rifle is to uh, use the charging handle to pull the bolt all the way to the rear. And then uh, on the other side, there's a control. Press the bottom to lock the bolt to the rear. Insert the magazine making sure that it's all the way in and uh, doesn't pull out. And then you can depress this paddle on the opposite side. That's the most effective way of seating the round. You don't want to ride the charging handle forward. If you fail to seat the round, there's the forward assist, which is uh, this right here. And that will uh, push the round all the way into the chamber. Do you need that? Some say you don't, but I know of at least one instance where a person survived because he was able to tap the forward assist and quickly uh, fix a malfunction. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you can call me lucky or you can call me a liar, but I just shot a 1.5 inch group with the M16 with iron sights on the same target in which I shot a 9 inch group with the uh, FN rifle with iron sights. We'll talk about why that might be possible. The M16s of the Rhodesian Bush War era would have had two uh, apertures. Now, I complained about the fact that I had uh, an aperture that was too large on my uh, FN rifle and before that I had an aperture that was too small. The M16 has always had these flip up apertures so if I'm uh, at closer ranges and I want to quickly acquire a target I have a large aperture but if I'm at 100 meters and I'm trying to shoot a very small target I can flip it up and I have a smaller aperture so I can really center that front sight post and get a consistent shot. I just wanted to talk about the uh, three cartridges of the three rifles we've talked about. On the left is the 5.56 by 45 millimeter or 5.56 uh, NATO cartridge. It fires a 55 grain uh, bullet. It goes uh, about 3,200 feet per second, I think. In the middle, we have the uh, FN rifle cartridge, which is the 7.62 
NATO, and that travels at about 3,000 feet per second, and it has a 150 grain bullet. And then, of course, on the right, we have the 7.62 by 39 millimeter, which is the uh, Russian AK cartridge. Uh, fires about a 125 grain bullet, only about 2,400 feet per second. So, in conclusion, I'd say that the uh, M16 has a very light, accurate bullet. 7.62 NATO cartridge has the potential to be uh, accurate and it's very fast and flat shooting as well. And the 7.62 by 39 is a heavy bullet, but it's slower, so it has an arc on it. Pretty good penetration through vegetation, but uh, doesn't really get out past about 300 meters. So allow me to pontificate on my conclusions about these rifles. The uh, FN is a great rifle. All three of these rifles are extremely reliable, and I would take any of them into combat. Uh, it's just, uh, maybe I just have a bad example. Maybe my FN, because of its 16-inch barrel, is uh, less accurate. But I just feel like the uh, the FN is an older design. It was one of the first uh, NATO rifles uh, when NATO went to a battle rifle. And it just doesn't take full advantage of the uh, inherent accuracy of the 7.62 NATO cartridge, which... You know, it's also used as a sniper weapon. Uh, there's no reason why um, I should be getting five-inch groups with with a uh, optic uh, with a rifle. So, just the older design and just just not as accurate as the other two. However, I think the advantage of the FN is is just that heavy, fast 7.62 uh, cartridge. So if you are shooting at people who are hiding behind cover or hiding in bushes or something like that, then the 7.62's heavy, fast bullet is just going to retain more energy and have more chance of doing damage than the other two. Uh, the AK, also, you know, not particularly accurate, but it's extremely good for CQB. If I was going to have to go in a building and uh, clear a building, I think I'd rather have the AK than, than the other two rifles. But then finally, is the M16. And to me, it's just got it all, and maybe that's why... Uh, the U.S. Army has been using variants of the M16 for as long as I've been alive. They adopted the uh, M16 during the Vietnam War, which is when I was born, and uh, we're still using it. Um, it has a light bullet, but it's a very fast bullet, and it's just inherently accurate. And uh, it's light. You know, the, the two rifles on the right, the M16 and the uh, AKM, weigh about 7 pounds each, and the FN weighs about 9 pounds. That can really make, it, really make a difference when you're, uh, you know, humping around the bush for days at a time. Um, so, I would just have to say, uh, even though the uh, M16s were rare, I've seen people carrying them on ranches to defend their ranches from communist terrorists. And also there were like private security uh, contractors, uh, basically security guards, ranch guards in Rhodesia that I've seen carrying uh, M16s. Um, so they were rare, they wouldn't have been easy to come by. Um, and of course if you're in the regular army, you'd pretty much have to carry an FN rifle. If you were in a special unit like the Salu Scouts, uh, where you were impersonating uh, communist terrorists, then you would have carried the uh, AKM, and uh, and that wouldn't have been a bad choice either. But anyhow, all three of these rifles are excellent. They're all extremely reliable. I had no problem with any of them malfunctioning. Uh, it just depends on the range, I guess. And, and most uh, combat in uh, World War II, for example, was within like 50 meters, I think they said. Um, in Afghanistan, the ranges have been more extended because of the terrain being uh, open desert a lot of places and the, the Taliban using the tactic of far ambush. Um, so I'd like to hear from Rhodesian war veterans, what were typical engagement distances? I mean, I've heard people in the British Army and the Rhodesian Army talk about how accurate the FN was and how um, they were able to uh, use superior marksmanship to defeat the communist uh, terrorists. Uh, so I'd just uh, be interested to know, like, what were typical engagement distances? Uh, 200 meters, 300 meters, less than 100 meters? Uh, please let me know in the comments.